All right, Crystal, what's on your radar? Well, Amazon may have put a Black Lives Matter banner on their homepage, but we are now learning new and innovative tactics that that company is employing to harass and coerce their blue collar workers, who are, of course, disproportionately black. So apparently, Amazon has been trying to hire what they describe as intelligence analysts to keep track of activists and union organizers in their latest documented attempt to make sure that their workers do not have the tiniest glimmer of a shred of hope of power within their own own workplace. So here is Vice reporting on Amazon's activities. They say that the company recently posted two job listings for analysts that can keep an eye on sensitive and confidential topics, including labor organizing threats against the company. Amazon is looking to hire an intelligence analyst, a senior intelligence analyst for its global security operations, global intelligence program, the team that is responsible for physical and corporate security operations, such as insider threats and industrial espionage. The jo job adds lists several kinds of threats such as protests, geopolitical crises, conflicts impacting operations, but focuses on organized labor in particular, mentioning it three times in one of the listings. So here is what the job listings actually looked like. These were pulled directly from Amazon's own job listing website and have apparently been up since January. Of course, once Amazon got called out for these listings, they pulled them, explaining there must have been some sort of unspecified mistake. Mm. Yeah, the mistake of saying a little too much of the quiet part uh, loud. Of course, it'll be no surprise to risers that Amazon, while singing a progressive tune publicly, is engaged in good old-fashioned suppression, union-busting, bullying, and generally putting their precious bottom line over the lives of their blue-collar workers. Of course, with millions of small and medium businesses closing their doors for good, it's not like workers have a whole lot of other options than Amazon at this point. Open Markets Institute is out with a new report detailing Amazon's aggressive surveillance techniques, how they harm the emotional and physical health of workers, and how they prevent union organizing. So according to that report, when you enter an Amazon warehouse, you're scanned and you're screened and you're forced to hand over all of your personal belongings. Security cameras, watch your every movement. Giant televisions display videos of workers who were caught stealing and fired or arrested as a warning to all. But security cameras were apparently not enough for the Amazon Panopticon, no. Warehouse workers actually wear monitors so that their literal every movement is tracked. Workers can be reprimanded and fired by the surveillance tech without a human supervisor ever even being involved. Coronavirus has provided Amazon with brave new worlds of surveillance and coercion. They use technology to enforce a strict six feet distance, which keeps any potentially rebellious or labor friendly workers from congregating and collaborating. Workers report that this strict separation though, is only really enforced for workers, not for supervisors. Hibak Mohammed, a stower in Minneapolis, told Open Markets Institute, they created a new policy of keeping six feet apart and you get a warning if you don't do it, but managers, they are not getting it. They are not doing it. The only people that are giving warnings to are organizing leaders. They are taking this as an opportunity to fire workers. So yeah, I guess intelligence analysts are meant to gather and report on all this wonderful data collected by Amazon's mass surveillance system. Makes sense, doesn't it? And here's the thing. This kind of monitoring and coercion has dire consequences. Workplace injuries are so rampant at Amazon that they were named as one of the most dangerous places in the entire country to work. One can only imagine the stress and the emotional toll of constant high stakes, ever present monitoring. Workers describe feeling like they are quote, trapped animals and called the work soul destroying and like living in a prison. And of course, while we're focused on Amazon, worth noting that somewhere around 80% of companies are projected to engage in some form of employee surveillance. Amazon often serves as a pioneer in the field. In fact, tactics used at Amazon have been important to their largest competitor, Walmart. So apparently, it's not enough for Amazon that they've got every politician in this town eating out of their hands. It's not enough that they've been allowed free reign to create massive monopolies that destroy small businesses in American communities in their quest for absolute productivity and the fattest possible bottom line. They think nothing of the consequences for the human beings that they employ, including the black lives that they pay lip service to. Just ask Chris Smalls, an organizer who was fired in an action he describes as retaliation. Chris is part of a protest movement demanding better conditions and wages for Amazon workers. We covered their latest action, you can see it here, included building a guillotine outside of Bezos' DC residence. I understand that they're headed to his Beverly Hills mansion next. Oh, 
And there is one more thing that we must never forget when it comes to Amazon and their brutal and dehumanizing treatment of workers. One of Amazon's top executives these days is former Obama press secretary Jay Carney. In fact, as the person in charge of PR for all of Amazon's global operations, Obama's friend Carney is the man they turn to when they need to launder their actual behavior through liberal virtue signaling, a skill I'm sure he perfectly honed and developed while working in the Obama White House. Which is just another reminder and lesson to us all. If your political leaders are not talking about shifting power through unions or redistribution or economic rights, they will happily mouth the words Black Lives Matter matter while ruthlessly ruining actual black lives. And Sagar, I reached out to Chris Smalls, who we've had on the show. He's been a great organizer and passionate advocate here for a comment on this particular story. If we can go ahead and throw that graphic up on the screen. Um, he says that it is disturbing to see that the company would go to this extreme measure to create a position, which is a high paying union busting spy. Workers should have the right to organize without fear, especially after claims that the company does not retaliate against workers for doing so. We all now can see that was a lie the entire Entire time. Why does a retail company need such intelligence? We cannot continue to give them a pass over and over. This was intentional and very much has been for a long time. Take it from me. Very well said there, Chris. No, this scared the crap out of me. Intelli this is like 21st century Pinkerton detectives, mm -hmm. right? And wasn't it you who told me about how Amazon in Whole Foods uses infrared he heat, heat maps heat maps to map their employees while they're on breaks in order to make sure that they're not congregating? So what they, this is crazy stuff, people. So they have like, these heat maps of which Whole Foods locations now owned by Amazon, of course, are most at risk for union activity. That includes things like demographic factors, race policy poverty level, all of these things. So, I mean, and look, this is like a little window into this, but corporations will spend endless money and effort and risk breaking the law because you have to allow workers to have the right to organize in order to make sure that workers have no power in the yeah, world. Yeah, what's a few million if you can avoid paying a few hundred million in you know increased wages? That is really what it's all yeah. about. No, this is absolutely disgusting and it's terrifying. This is really what the new kind of corporate regime is all about. And you know, to any Republican libertarians who might be watching, when I say that we have to consider that corporate power may be just as much of a threat to your livelihood and your life as government power. This is what I'm talking about, because at least with the feds, you can FOIA them, or you have Congress, which has an oversight. Who is overseeing these Amazon intelligence agents? Who is use, whose personal data is being used without their consent right. for during heat mapping? What if they, you know, like, what do they know about you if they can see heat residual figure? This is like battlefield tactics in the stores and warehouses of America, except in this case, there's not no noble cause even to try and justify it. They're like, no, we're explicitly trying to make sure you can't form a union. It's absolutely crazy so when you think about it. That Open Markets Institute report yeah. um, used this language that, I mean, it's a small thing, but to me it was like an aha moment in my head that if you are a civil libertarian and you care about surveillance, yeah. corporate, corporate surveillance is actually much more pervasive and invasive, invasive than anything that the government is actually doing. And that's not to downplay what the government is also doing here. But there's software that, look, if you're a white collar worker and you're working at a computer all day, if you're working on a corporate laptop, they have software that tracks your literal every keystroke. Yeah, they own okay? it. Right. In these Amazon warehouses, tracking your every single movement, and if you don't get to your item in the time that they want you oh, right. to, step count. they That's give right. step count. Yeah. They give you a warning. You're reprimanded if you don't stay on the pace that they want. I mean, imagine that being your life, every literal second of your day being tracked and monitored, eyes on you from the time that you walk in till the time that you walk out, and that is what millions of workers are dealing with. It's incredibly dehumanizing. I mean, it's oh, not treating you as a human being. It's treating you as less than. Oh, yeah. I, one of the worst stories I ever read was actually a Daily Beast article, which just details all of the 911 calls that come from Amazon warehouses based on public record. Yeah. And they're like, we got another suicide over here. Got another suicide over here. Horrible. Got a workplace accident over here. The amount of suicide and, you know, 
attempted self-harm that it happens on site at Amazon warehouses by Amazon employees. That tells you a little bit about what kind of company that Bezos is running over there. Indeed. Yeah. All right, next on Rising, Trump campaign reveals why they hit pause on TV ads spending less than 100 days from the election. At least we're going to try to get them to reveal that. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> That's yeah. coming up on Rising.